Hello everybody, this is the first interview ever for the Monthly Hackers Digest, and I'm pleased to be interviewing someone in the community that we all know, Arch, the creator of the almost finished Olivia Nights. So Arch, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I just got my laptop back yesterday actually, so I'm opening Nightmare and Fedditor for the first time in, in a little, in a couple days. So, you know, just trying to get back in the groove. And I'm really anxious to get this done because, uh, you know, it's it's been about five years at this point that I've been working on this project, and I know that people are excited to play it without bugs or the game imploding on itself or anything like that. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to get that out within the next two weeks or so. The final version. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, there's there's still one pretty big glitch that we need to fix, which is that we need to reallocate the Link Arena unit memory because that's pretty useless in the Game Boy Advance um, so that we can store more NPCs in the suspend memory because as it is right now, if you um, suspend and resume on the tail select or on a map that has a lot of NPCs, some of them will just disappear because the game just doesn't remember them. Um, so that's pretty much the biggest glitch left, and that's something that's been just part of the engine throughout the entire time we've been building it. Um, so otherwise it's just fixing up text glitches and all and tying up loose ends, and I've been actually been working on, uh, for the bonus content, I've been doing a couple mini-maps based on, uh, you know, just a couple, like, tail concepts that I had. Because I wanted to do one where Guy fought Karel. So the biggest hurdle you'd say would be that uh, suspend glitch. Or not really a glitch, but suspend limitation. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's the biggest hurdle to it being a complete polished product at this point. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, like, there, there, I mean, it, if you think back to December when we did that, um, I had a whole chat room helping me out with debugging, and it was just blowing up in everyone's faces. Uh, and, you know, part of that's the result of going back and adding Matchmaker, where basically I, for the past couple, for a couple months, I had been working on just taking all of my old uh, code and just adding fuck tons of conditional logic to it. <laughs> and it, it, it gets really convoluted, and sometimes you don't keep track of it well enough, and you get, you know, where the conditional IDs are the same in two different conditions and they'll loop to each other at different points in the event and you'll get caught in an infinite loop there. They're just like, oh, a whole bunch of this shit can go wrong with just the slightest of typos. Okay, so Olivia Nights has been one of, the long, one of the longest running hacks to date and sometimes there's a streak of nothing but bug reports in your progress threads. Does that make it difficult to continue? You know, um... For, for a couple of of the first releases, once the project started getting more complex in its nature, um, and you'll see, I did I did an April Fool's release the other day. Yeah, what was that? I, put out, I, I literally put out the first public patch <laughs> because, and I, I was inspired to do that because someone in the thread was asking, "Well, like, oh, so this is the this is the beta. Like, what can we expect from the final version?" And it's like, well, you can expect the beta without bugs <laughs> and whatever else I feel like adding, you know, and just in a fit of inspiration. But, uh, you know, and so I, I just wanted to show people how far it had come. And it, it was weird because I found it on my hard drive on an external not too long ago. And it's like there's no tail select. There's like, there's no, there's like, it's just totally different. It, it was so weird to go back and see that, and just I, I just wanted people to, whoever downloaded it, just you know to see, just how far the progress has come, and just how thoroughly redone it's been from even like the initial, the initial version of the three tales. Two of them are nothing like what they were. Right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of just design changes and whatnot, from like the very first beta to right now, what do you think is the biggest design change or like new mechanic that you've implemented uh, since the first beta, since the first beta uh, way back like years ago to now? Dude, that's like asking me to pick a favorite son. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I mean, I'd have to say that I'm really proud of what what I have accomplished with Matchmaker because I feel like it added something that was really missing from the game because you have this hub world and you can play through the tales as much as you like. And there are achievements, and like going back and getting those adds a bit of replayability value. But with Matchmaker, you just get to totally alter the composition of the party and who's available, and it just really changes the strategic makeup and how you tackle the map in some cases. And so I feel like it adds a lot of replayability, and I feel like player choice elements like that were something that were lacking too, because the tales themselves are so confined in their nature that originally there wasn't really any progress between them at all, and then I added you know, transfers to like second parts and such. But right. as a whole, I feel like that really adds... I feel like it adds the most to the experience of any of what, what I consider the, to be the big three of Olivia Knights, which are the Achievements and the Tail Select and the Matchmaker. Mm. Um. So I know you're talking about replayability, but like, let's get serious here. Did you just make Matchmaker for fan service? Nah. I <laughs> okay, so I am the person who, when I first saw like Fire Emblem Awakening with a screenshot with like five skill slots, and there was like an HP plus five thing. I, as soon as I saw that, I'm just like, they're selling out. They're selling out. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking. Because it just made me think of Final Fantasy Tactics, and it and just the art style and everything, it just made me think it was like this is the mainstream game that they're making to sell to prove that it can sell, and it did, and it worked, and the series is saved. But I, I mean, I wouldn't just add it for fan service. I mean, I feel like I wanted to add it. I mean, and th- that's definitely an element to it. I mean, I I wouldn't add something that I didn't think people would enjoy using yeah but it's not it's not purely for fan service yeah it's it's just interesting because i've I've, it was sort of in a way for me because i've been looking at these same tales now and there's been a lot of revision from the early stages but for the past like year year and a half it's been kind of static and just kind of about like putting everything together and making it into a product and it just got kind of boring after a while mm. I, like, can see, same, I can see just, that yeah i like i it's it's it was to the point where i couldn't even really play the tales anymore without something to just sort of spark my interest back into it and so i was just sitting down one night and i realized how I could implement Matchmaker. It just kind of came to me when I was thinking about like what I could do with Living Nights because I really need to get it over the finish line and I really need something to push me mm-hmm. that far. And I thought about that and it's like, well, that's exactly what I need is to think about all the different ways in which I could have approached the tales with different characters in them, you know? Mm-hmm. So it and, seems to me like... Uh... Like the beginning of Living Nights seemed really conservative, and then as you started, you know, I like improving your hacking skills, and like uh, your group started to become, I suppose, more diverse in terms of because you have a lot of ASM hackers on your team, eh? It I seems do like, now. Yeah, it's kind of a more recent development, actually. It's ever since I started um, the second incarnation of Fire Emblem Universe. Um, just all, I didn't even know we had so many, and they just all came out of the woodwork. It is. It was kind of surprising it's, to have such an influx. It's of just like, yeah, it's amazing. It's glorious. I love them all so much. <laughs> yeah. So Olivia Nights is one of the longest running hacks. Um, would you, so would you say that like your sort of like inspirations to think of new mechanics is the one thing that's uh, always been like a motivator for you to continue on? Oh, definitely. I mean, so if, if you think about Corel's Tale, where you have the boss gauntlet concept. I mean, that was just totally inspired by me playing Super Smash Bros. Brothers Brawl, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just where they had the little boss rush, and it's like I was playing that, it's like, that'd make, a cool, uh, that'd make a cool tale if I did something like that, you know? That's always really been the big motivator for me. After a point, I, I mean, I started in a in a very limited direction because my skill, my skill level wasn't that high. But yeah, so there, there's a lot of power to the simplicity of an on-and-off switch. And just the ability to check that, 
with a simple true false value mm -hmm. and it it's amazing like everything that i've come up with in olympian nights is the result of on or off and just the game being able to remember like 60 or so of those values throughout multiple chapters you know and that that's really where all of it comes from and so i i think that there's so many ways in which you, we can really push the engine in new directions you know even without asm but especially with asm you can just do all sorts of cool shit oh um so in your topic title uh this is sort of like off topic now and more mm. chill uh yeah. it's a libyan or elevine like elevine i mean <laughs> can you explain that because i'm floored i don't know what to think here like, okay okay so we, I, I i i still don't know what to think <laughs> so there is a support conversation in fire emblem 7 where farina calls it the elevian calendar with the e mm -hmm. now bwd yeti and i had were talking about how to pronounce it and i was saying we should just pronounce it wrong like people say Pirates of the Caribbean instead of Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said I was saying we should just keep saying it the same way. Um, and then we looked all into the fucking etymology of all the, you know, what you put to the end of the country's name to describe its people as an adjective. And my saving grace is the territory of Belize. Which is the closest thing we can find to Elib. Okay. That's an actual country name. Oh, yeah. And it's Belizean. And so I, I, I think it. I think we're just going to keep pronouncing it like... Think of it like you, you say Elibian, just say Elibian. Just like put a, li put a bit more E on that second syllable. But I, I think we came to the conclusion that it's pretty much pronounced the same as we always had been. Yeah. Uh, that I actually that makes a lot more sense to me now because I was like, <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, me personally, I am so bad at pronouncing Fire Emblem names. It, they're just so <laughs> right. They're, they oh man, like I sometimes butcher them hard. I got uh I got Elliewood wrong. I always said I I always just forgot that I was there and it said Elwood. Yeah. And Blazer called me out for it, and I was just like, well, fuck, sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, bro. <laughs> um, so. Uh, given that um, the project has been working for so long and you've probably met a bunch of new people, uh, ha with your like sort of core team, do you have like a top three fondest memories or like funniest inside jokes uh, with them? Because I know for my hacking team, uh, we'll Skype call and we'll just like go off topic and we won't even talk about hacking, but we'll just joke around. And there's uh, it's just like it's sort of become. I'm sure you know what I mean, but it's 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 mm -hmm. it's become more hacking. It's become more than hacking. It's become like a friendship. Yeah. Uh, so you you must have one. Of, you must have like jokes and stuff like that with your team, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. I I love my colleagues and peers, and all they're all friends. You know, I love them all to death. And I, I'd say that you know one of my fondest recent memories was at Ian Beta because <laughs> it was it was just so amazing. You know, it's it's fucking Christmas and the game is breaking apart. And like all my all my homies are just there, you know, on Christmas, no less. Yeah. Just help me zap bugs and just going through and finding what's wrong, and it it, it was the most incredible thing. And you know, you, I'm talking about it now. I almost bring a tear to my eye. <laughs> but you know, it, it just just in those moments, that was just it, it was just like really really an amazing one. And then. You know, from the olden days, back uh, back um, when we did the FE4A prank for April 1st, that was that was so fun because like we had BWD Yeti and he made up a false like fall of flame animation, and then Mage Knight 404 did a Sigurd battle sprite still, and then like, I remember other people doing blinking frames, so it looked like all the mugs were like kind of complete, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and like. We had a fucking. It was it, it was it was so much fun, and we just like I was just coming up with ways like I need this this this, and like we just 
made so many fake screenshots that day. In like the span of 24 hours, we had hatched the plan and executed it. <laughs> and it was it was just it was so fucking fun. Like I'll I'll never forget that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of I mean same with me. Well, I don't think I don't know if I could actually like pinpoint one myself. Uh <laughs> I just I mean it's just uh I don't know, just the fact that something that can start from like one person like as the creator and then it just sort of like branches out and pe- more people get interested and they want to get into it and you just I mean I'm probably gonna you know stay friends like even like I'm definitely gonna stay friends with some with like most of my team past hacking whenever I finish with that I don't even know um, oh yeah of course I mean I don't even know what I'm gonna be done at this point like <laughs> yeah uh, I've still got so much I want to do you know is the plan after Libby Knight still um, exalted legacy it's still that's still the plan, yeah. So, but what I want to do first, I mean, I want to do Fire Shell first. That's the next big thing on my radar. Yeah. And we're gonna be we're gonna be focusing on that. Hopefully, once we get a replacement for Fedder too, because that's also in the works over on FEU. Um, mm-hmm. But once we get those two things, I feel like it's gonna. I feel like it's really gonna change a lot about hacking. It's going to make it a lot more approachable to people. And I, I feel like that's one of, like, there are definitely barriers in the community because it's definitely hard to learn this stuff. For sure. Like, no question about it. There's nothing intuitive about ROM hacking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's all just, like, it's all the game's code just, like, jumbled into numbers. That's all, that's, that's what we're playing with. And... Like, I, I don't know. Like, there, there are definitely people who have who have an aptitude for it, who are programmers and know what they're doing. I'm not one of those people. Ditto. You know, I'm I'm I I found it as a medium that you know I I just want to write stories and you know make things for people to enjoy. And I feel like that creative mindset is something that you know that's that's what I want to focus on is empowering that creativity in others. Because, you know, I've already made, like, a popular good game that, you know, people are clamoring to get or whatever. But, you know, I, I, I want to see other people be able to do that, too, you know? Right. I want to see I – I just want to see as many, like, good hacks as I can. Yeah, I agree with you there. There's been a nice influx of uh, concepts lately, though. I'm actually kind of surprised. There's been, like – there's, like, three new hacks, like, just came out of nowhere that actually have screenshots. So I'm excited to see how uh... that yeah, it's... Actually, I'm so proud they're actually putting screenshots in their concepts now. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> interesting. You know what? I think I think this summer is going to be uh, one of the most. Uh, it's gonna. I think this summer is gonna have the biggest year for hacking. Um, I think. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of I think a lot of projects are gonna be released for the first time. I think FE three is gonna be huge this year. Uh, Dude, I hope so, because, I mean, last year was kind of a dud, and that's that's kind of my fault for trying to parody Nintendo Direct. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyways, I mean, I, I hope, because we had a lot of projects that just had to back out last year. Yeah, that seems to be They're sort just of like, a thing They didn't get happen. as far as they wanted, and so they didn't get to show, like, the really cool thing that they wanted to do. Um, like, I wanted to release Libyan Nights at FE3. But then Matchmaker would have never even happened. Right. So, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I really hope it there's good turnout this year. I hope we're able to put out a replacement for Fedditor this year, this summer. That would be... That, I mean, I'm telling you, that's going to be a game changer. Mm-hmm. What they're coming up with right now. Because there's a lot... Like, a lot of the things that happen in hacking is you'll make a little error like here and then just not notice it for a while. And then you'll go back to it. It's like, well, when the fuck did I do that? <laughs> when the fuck did that changes? How did this get all jumbled up? Like, why aren't the HP numbers working anymore? <laughs> or like, you know, just stuff like that. And it's like version control is something that they're emphasizing. Like the ability to go back and be able to pinpoint precisely like what you changed when, you know? 
And I feel like that's going to be a major change. It's going to be, and just th- having a whole interface that incorporates everything into just one kind of, you know, Swiss Army knife for hacking. Mm-hmm. I it's going to be. It's going to be as impactful as Fedditor and Event Assembler were, if not more, because I feel like this is going to open up the door for a lot of people to be able to try it and actually competently approach it. So um, as an experienced hacker such as yourself, what is the most important kind of tip of advice you can give to some novice hackers who are start- who are trying to uh, get their project off the ground? So... I, I would I would emphasize two things. I, I would the first I would emphasize is definitely the networking aspect, and it's definitely what we were just talking about. Um, you know, just friendships that that have the potential to last a lifetime, everywhere you go. You know, and networking and just acknowledging that it's very rare that you're going to find one person who can do everything that's required to develop their own video game. So, yeah, I would emphasize the networking. And then the second one that I really feel is most important to me as a developer would be just be to not feel constrained by anything. If you think about Fire Emblem and you think about its core concepts, you don't really have to be bound by any of that. And you shouldn't feel bound by any of that. You should feel free to push the format and to change the structure and to do like Olivia Knights like I I always hoped that Olivia Knights would inspire people to try different things mm-hmm. with their own ROM hacks um, and you know in inevitably you're gonna get a couple people who are like oh I, I'm gonna do what Arch is doing I'm gonna do <laughs> I'm gonna do it in Magbull but that that's not I mean emulation is flattering but it's it's not really it's not really what I, what I want to inspire as a person, you know. I, I, I just I my advice to new new hackers would be to feel don't feel limited, get creative and come up with something that you re- that you really feel passionate about, that you can really invest yourself in. Because you, you when you're first starting out, you look at it and you you can see like the whole racetrack and you you see it in your head what you want you know but it, it it's a marathon you know it's years it's a years long marathon to do these projects mm-hmm. and you you have to be able to feel that sort of investment to not just want to say fuck it after a year or two you know mm-hmm. it seems like it has to be more than hacking for it to be a good hack yeah I mean, you ha- I, I guess point three would be just put your soul into it, man, you know? Yeah, if you're going to be so, investing months, you might as well just invest the most you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, there are things in Olivia Nights. Maybe I didn't implement them well, you know? And maybe someone comes along and says, thinks about that and comes up with a way to do it better. And, I mean, honestly, that would... Nothing would make me feel better than to see something like that, you know? Because a lot of the hackers lose their, like, lose their, like, literal commitment because they're, like, most hackers who are, like, project-leading hackers are, like, mm-hmm. what, like, early 20s? Like, in the like in, in the 20-year-old yeah. range, so, like, life starts to take over. And then yeah. I also said because uh, a lot of hacks crash and burn because they either don't get enough feedback or the feedback that they do get is really, like, shit. Um, yeah, yeah, that was a big problem for a while. Was that people were just too discouraging? Yeah. For, so for Serenade yeah. specifically, because we're both sort of part of the community, what is it? What's the next sort of step, or what is what? What sort of things need to be done for the community or by the community uh, to sort of eradicate that um, that connotation of negativity completely? Yeah. So I, I remember back in the day. Back in the day when we had Team Over Troll was in its heyday. And when people used to come talk shit in the Olivia Nights thread, I just had my crew talk shit. <laughs> and, it, and it worked for a while, you know. Um, but then that kind of that kind of mob mentality died down a little bit. And I started just, I mean, 
Because I, I always try to be open to criticism in what I do. And I feel like part of it is on one end that people are getting a bit more open to the fact that you're going to face some criticism. Because there are people here who have done this before you and who have devoted time to figuring it out. So you should listen to those people. Now, when they're just random bystanders hopping in and talking trash... Like that that's what I that's what I don't I don't appreciate. I don't think it's necessarily constructive. You know, tearing people down should never be an objective. And I, I feel like it's definitely waned a bit over the years as more and more people have just kind of come to that realization. And I've tried to do my part in you know, just kinda of calling it as as I came to see it, that, you know, Having all your friends here to talk shit is pretty stupid because it's the internet and you don't need a game. People need to realize that the best way, I, I feel like the best way, and the way that you're going to get people to like you and the way that you're going to be able to accomplish those networking goals and reach out to others and have them react positively to you is if you try to be positive in what you do, you know? And, I mean, if someone's just really being egregious, like, you know, you can smack them down. You know, you're, you're gonna you're gonna face, like, some challenges here. And if you can't take a little bit of heat on a message board, you're probably not gonna be able to see a project through to its end once it starts imploding, like something like Olivia Knights does, you know? But on the other hand, I would say that people who were established were too too set in their ways, you know, and just too, like, just too openly hostile for a long time to people who just came and were, you know, just, it's like I'm new here. Like, if, if you just walk into a town and don't know anybody, like, you're going to stumble around, too, for a little bit until you figure it out. So I, I feel like it's moved in a more positive direction, and I feel like to get to the second half of the question which is, what's the next step? I feel like it's harder to answer, because I, I, I'm not really sure. And with Fire Emblem Universe, that's kind of my way of not necessarily being so invested in Serenis anymore, because that atmosphere just was not conducive to getting things done and to getting people together to work on projects. Mm -hmm. And so... I, I feel like I feel like it's definitely softened as a community. Like, I, I feel like I feel like we've come a long way, and there's still a ways to go. But just that just that sense of cooperation and and that shared spirit that we're all really here for the same thing, you know. That we're all trying to get, I mean, you know, maybe we're trying to get different value out of it. Maybe we have different visions of what we think is like. I mean, I, I definitely like see projects that other people are doing and it's just like this completely clashes with my with every aesthetic sense i have as as a designer as like a level progression like character cast bloat like all sorts of shit and but it's like you know at the end of the day you're the one who's putting in the effort to make that and if you're happy with it and you can put in all that effort and actually finish it then I mean, there, there, there is no version of reality in which that should not be applauded by the community. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I mean, so I did FE4A, and we did, like, the open source mugs, and there was a lot of them. And when I gave that up, I just promised myself I'd never waste people's time like that again. Uh -huh. You know, because I, I felt really bad blowing it up, you know, because a lot of people invested time into that, not just me, but Nintendlord invested a lot of time into that, too. And, like, I, I, I felt bad, but it's like, this is never going to be what it should, you know? Right. And then, But Pi, Pi is the chosen one, and he is going to do a better job than I could have ever hoped. Is Pi using the mugs, the open source mugs? I I think he opted to sprite all of his own. <laughs> but they're all there. I mean, I 
I think I told him once, like, if you, if you need to talk to me or, like, anything about FE4, like, anything at all, like, that was created for that, have at it. Yeah. But he, he's nuts, dude. He's just crazy talent. He's, uh, he's, like, that one guy who can do it all. Yeah, that's what I was – that because that's when I was saying, like, it's very rare that you're going to find one guy who can do it all in, like, one of my answers – I was thinking about fucking Pi. Yeah, I was thinking when you were saying it, I was like, "It's fucking Pi." Yeah, <laughs> he's, no, a go- he's yeah, a fucking. G- he's like, like he's a go- I don't want to say nobody, because somebody like pops immediately into my head. Oh, that's Pi. <laughs> Pi is Legion. <laughs> <laughs> so for lip, no, no, for uh, for FE three, is it just gonna be Mage Knight, or have you like have we even have you even like kind of? I mean, the summer's coming around the corner, so. It is, dude. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna be May, and then, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it that seriously, but I, I remember that we wanted to do. Like I don't know, because we've been talking about making a channel for it for a couple of years, but if we haven't already done that, it seems kind of like a moot point. Yeah, I mean, it, it yeah. seems really, like a little too situational to make a channel for. That's. It. See that that was always my gut instinct, you know. It's just it's too situational. But now you've got, you know, hopefully we've got these like every like three month things going on too. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be cool. But for F E three, I think it'd be cool I mean, whoever wants to wants to do stuff for it. I mean, it's always a community effort. Yeah. So I wanna I wanna since I'm like LPing hacks now, I wanna get involved in it too. For sure, dude. For yeah. sure. But because like I don't know, like it seemed like Mage Knight was getting kind of like exhausted towards the end. Like he LP like fifty billion yeah. hacks in like one day. I know. <laughs> if it's gonna be even bigger this year, like, yeah, it's gonna need all the help we can get. So, I'm I'm gonna have to do way more on my game for that this year. I was fucking like that was a busy time in my life, but at mm-hmm. the same time, it's just like I didn't devote nearly enough time to organizing that as I should have. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, this year, this year we're going to have to, I'm going to bring my A-game, and I hope everyone else does too. All right. Well, that uh, ends the first interview of the Monthly Hackers Digest. I just want to give a big thanks to Arch for putting his time out to uh, having me interview and bother him, bother him with some questions. Uh, Arch, is there, is there anything you'd like to uh, finish off with? No, no, I think uh, I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, you know, long interview, and if people, if you sat through all that, I thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you, Gast, for having me, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of this uh, rest of this Hackers Digest. It's great that you're putting it together, man. So, <laughs> good work. All right, guys. Well, with that being said, we'll catch you guys on the flip.